Moshi Moshi, my gamers, and welcome back to Hawkeye Style Whale. Under Hanyan's invitation, laced with both Levi's and Inkui, March 7th, for Tuesday, earn a chance to pussy in the war dance. Trained by the style of the two great law fools and summoning generals, she was now gifted with a chance to live into the intricacy of Shenzhou Hole Soy Play. March future Pacific will boundless a matter worth much celebration. Today was the March training arc, so I have to kill this guy or just beat his ass and then Are get started. Ready? Uh, I'm ready! Yeah, I'm ready. But please go easy on me. Then I apologize in advance, Miss March. Now, what he said, I'm gonna kill you either way. <gasps> That's not him! No, oh, never mind. Take ten of you. No, watch me, You stand in picture with the sword. Why don't you use your skill for it and learn a few moves from me? So I press E. Understood. Now ask me a message to teach me some moves. Now, please have some tea, masters. <laughs> what? Pay close attention, Miss March. <laughs> yeah. The sword swordplay is all about being swift and agile in your movements. So swift attacks can occur charge for my seven and make her realize powerful abilities. That's funny. It's like. Drink some tea, master. That's hilarious. Strike with heart. <laughs> yes, you. Oh, what's the cool part? She blocks mostly. <laughs> Ignore him. Strength is everything. What? No, it's not. Who taught you that? Those guys? Oh, fuck them. They taught you one, dude. Um, it went my wish one, so I'm gonna start with this guy or that one. <laughs> No. How about this? Hmm, let's go. Oh my god, look at him. Never mind. That's about this thing with March. Um, I can take down down because she's fade. Why did the end look so thick? Oh, that's not you. Ooh. Yeah, watch this. Yes, you! Ooh. Right on okay, it's like another Clara. Like once she gets attacked, she is going to hit you back. But Clara, she calls for for Mr. Sorg. Go for this one. Swords descend. Descend. <laughs> Seems upset and frozen. Sorry. Strike you down. Oh damn! So press E. Oh ho ho! Let she dances. Now like, hey, you want some tea? Why is that part of your so hilarious? Okay, swing. I'm starting to get the hang of it. Watch, got it. All right. In That's how a true master does it. Oh my God! Being cutesy. Let's start with this one. I'm going a little bit. Take this down. We broke a little. How come Mars have a fire skin yet? Well, we don't know the truth yet. She's still a voice star with this ability too. Well, that's pretty fine. The best part is it's free to get to the switch. Skills polished, ready hmm. to shine. Let's see you all actually. I don't see. Time to show you what I can really do. This guy, why are you thinking about that? Why are you thinking about food? What the hell are you thinking, woman? Anyways, this is attack. Azure dragon, white tiger, eating less cock. What's this? Did you say, did you say cock? Or con? What are you mumbling about? Um. Uh, isn't this a sword technique? Shouldn't I be saying something cool? I mean, I guess she was. Okay, this is attack. <laughs> Because after this, we gotta do more round. Yes, yeah. Just strike time enemy. like this one. Gonna you're show me what you're made of? Blast them all! Rock shattering slash. Did you hear so you do that? Better not underestimate me. Right on time. So, how 
Sweet. Sweet. Last. Time for some sword play. Still two. And then three. Practice is over. Middle. Swords descend. <laughs> Yo, angry but frozen. At the same time. Oh, I get it now. You'll make for good practice. <laughs> All right, check out this move. Oh shit, she dangerous. Oh, why? Why are you flashing with your, with your grippers? Oh my gosh, she just ended quickly. Damn. Okay, you're crazy. That bitch crazy. I didn't expect the first lesson to be. So intense. Miss March has quick hands and a flexible body. She's a perfect fit for practicing lawful swordplay. However, she lacks strength, and her strikes were a bit unfocused. But don't worry, it's totally normal for beginners. Once she starts practicing Jooming swordplay, she'll make heaps of progress. Given the situation, I believe Miss March should start by working on her strength. Um. Seriously, do you actually know anything about swordplay, or what? I could ask you the same thing! Dual swords require agility, so what's more important than footwork? Instead of focusing on her strengths, we should address her weaknesses. The drawback of wielding two swords is not generating enough force. What good is being quick on your feet if you don't have strength? It's not like we're dancing here. Skilled sword masters know how to play to their strengths and work on their weaknesses. Start with what you're good at, then tackle your weaknesses. That's the right way to learn. You're not one, buddy. <laughs> you're quite the theorist, huh? Theorist? I... You claim to be able to talk to swords. So what does that make you? A lunatic? Uh, hey, it's only my first lesson, and you're already arguing. Come on, calm down, masters. I'll have to improve both my footwork and strength anyway. So it doesn't matter which one comes first. That's why, Marge. But it does matter. Just, Just listen, listen to me, March 7th. Oh my god. <laughs> They're like two angry married coupled. Aww. It's like, why? Thus begins the journey of March 7th soy training. Okay. Soy training. Are we going to keep going with this or we'll switch to a different POV out of this? Okay, so what's the <gasps> go view? I mean, they'll lock it now. I could switch, switch to the pads, switch the pads. Uh huh, just like the main character. Okay, so if I go down here and then look at this, she poses like that, and like this, and she poses like that, and she turns like this. A very kitty being. I don't use the anymore, so you get to kiss away. So, what's part two? This time marches on, oh, a day turns to Moi. Dear Himeko, Mr. Yang, and Pom Pom, we're all good here on the Sianjo La Fu, so no need to worry. By the way, how's your trip going? Look at you, Liu Ling, right there, just eating, looking disappointed at um, future husband. As for me, I've somehow become the apprentice to two Cloud Knight sword masters, and I've been honing my sword skills with their guidance. One of them is Yen Ching, the boy we've all met before. The other is Yun Li, the granddaughter of General Hua Yen from the Xianzhou Ju Ming. Both masters are super strict, giving me a real taste of how hard sword training can be. I tried to drag him into this, but he refused. Then I tried to rope Don Hung in, but Master Yen Ching wouldn't have it. Still, I didn't let the difficulty get to me. In just a few weeks, my sword skills have improved a lot. Both my masters think I have unique talents in swordplay and are literally fighting each other to teach me their skills. Thanks to their guidance, I've actually made some progress. When I get back to the express, I'll definitely show off my skills and impress you all. Looking forward to your reply. Yours, March 7th. Days and night fly by the device as the warden's feast of process. Under the strict supervision of the two masters, Marcin and the trains chase tirelessly, almost developing tense syllables. On that day, after the soy training. <laughs> well done! Uh, let's call it a day. It's like, oh god! 
I'm sweating. I'm fucking sweating. <laughs> sword skills are really coming along. She'll hold her own just fine in the war dance. Hmm. <laughs> just watch, bitch. I'll win a five when the time comes. Uh, just you wait and see. I'll show off my skills in the ring and win a match. I'll make both of you proud. And me. Can you believe it? March 7th has actually become a pretty decent swordmaster in such a short time. Now I understand why Grandpa always had a grin on his face while training me. <laughs> Are you sure he wasn't laughing at you? Oh, shut up! <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. It's all thanks to your amazing guidance, Masters. Miss March, you're really getting the hang of wielding dual swords. If you're keen on advancing, trying out different Sanjo blades can improve your touch. Oh, let me see. Which sword is the most powerful? Single sword? Great sword? Or maybe a flying sword? Um, that's probably his uh, style only. I don't know about that. There's no such thing as the most powerful sword. That's true, though. The skill of the sword master. Yenqing wields several flying swords, while I only wield one. But remember how I kicked his butt at the Alchemy Commission? First, you didn't kick my butt. Second, you'll never kick my butt. Third, how about we settle this right now and see who kicks whose butt? My god, kid, you maybe sense some more than one wood. Yeah, I'm up for that. <laughs> and if I kick your butt, you'll drop out of the war dance. Deal? Marsh! <laughs> oh god, Marsh! Marsh, my god, just like all of us. Like, holy shit, these two motherfuckers won't stop fighting! <laughs> On TikTok. Why are you two arguing again? I thought things had been improving between you lately. My goodness, Marsh, I don't blame. Is it was that... talk that the leading disciples of the Law Fu and Ju Ming generals were supposed to face off in the war dance, but for some reason, they suddenly teamed up to train an apprentice of their own. <laughs> Turns out the rumors are true. Excuse me, who Tomorrow the fuck are you? Is the big day of the war dance. Shouldn't you two be focusing on honing your skills instead of teaching sword play here? Uh, you're... Um, you're... Ah, oh, that's right. You're the pink-haired fox from the Yaoqing. Oh, okay, I could step... I, I don't see any pink hair, actually. That seems pretty interesting. <laughs> pink hair fox. <laughs> Like, you know, I mean, it kind of does look pink, actually. I see it mostly red, but I see what she means. What are you laughing at? You've got pink hair, too. It's more noticeable than yours. I'm Zhao Cho, the healer working for the general of the Senjo Yaoqi. Ah, got it. So, you're the participant attending the war dance on behalf of the Yaoqing. And you were trying to sneak a peek at our training? Sorry for the misunderstanding. I don't know anything about martial arts. I'm just here on the general's orders to take care of some official business. I didn't mean to interrupt your training. I'll be on my way. If you know nothing about martial arts, why were you smirking earlier? <sighs> well, my curiosity got the better of me, I suppose. When I heard Miss March's pondering about what to learn, I couldn't help but wander over. Wonder over what a Kazuha would do. From my professional experience, cleavers, slicers, chopping knives, and carving knives are all just tools. Kind of like frying, sauteing, boiling, and deep frying in cooking. They're just ways for people to show off their skills. How you use them really depends on the ingredients you're working with. It's like your sword teaching methods. If you align your ingredient, in other words, your apprentice's natural tendencies, with the right cooking method, by which I mean the teaching method that best suits her, she'll make double the progress in half the time. For example, golden eggplant tastes best when fried, cloud peppers when stir-fried, and yellow boulder beef when simmered. It's all about discovering the nature of the ingredients. Uh, I mean, apprentice. Hmm. But they all said the same thing. What's the point of me picking? 
I'm getting hungry. All this talk about food is making me hungry. Are you a healer? Why are you talking about food? Well, it's just a metaphor. The medicinal school I follow on the Sanjo Yaoqing is called the Rancha School. That specializes in food therapy. So it's only natural that I know a thing or two about cooking. Mm -hmm. So you're the general's cook? I'm a healer. But anyway, a cook who isn't interested in health doesn't make for a good advisor. Fine. Call me a cook if you want. Seeing the way you're looking at me, it's obvious you think I'm just some feeble academic who likes to blabber on about martial arts. But, in reality, I know a thing or two about killing. After all, the art of healing inherently encompasses both life and death. Hmm. Hmm, seems like you just got offended. Seriously? Trying to save face in front of kids? Ugh. Do you recognize this bottle of medicine in my hand? No. This is called tumble dust. An extract from an exotic flower named Yabra. Ugh, is it poison? Well, it depends on how it's used. With just one drop, it's able to numb a patient's body during surgery, making them painless throughout the entire process. Increase the dose or the potency, and it'll slow the metabolism, making the blood thin and resulting in the loss of all senses. Even long-life species cannot escape its effects. This thing can save lives or take them. It's more powerful than the swords in your hands. That may be so, but still, I prefer settling things with a sword than, you know. Huh. Looks like I did get you all wrong. You're not a feeble scholar, but a sinister and despicable one. Hey, hey, why the insults all of a sudden? I'm just sharing some medical knowledge here. Not persuading you to poison anyone. Seems like you get real excited when talking about poison. I can't tell if that's an honorable thing or sinister. Picture this. Two individuals. The one standing is full of malice. The other lying down is honorable and righteous. How can the one who's lying down label the one standing as sinister. In the throes of combat, where life and death hinge on a singular moment, every idea fades into nothingness. The only thing that matters is staying alive. Surviving the battlefield reshapes all notions of worth, be it integrity or treachery. In my eyes, their significance is negligible. Perhaps you've underestimated Yun Li and me, Mr. Zhao Cho. We may be young, but we've seen our fair share of war. <laughs> well, well. Then you should know that the war dance is nothing more than a contest. So why are you so focused on it? When I was appointed as the ringmaster for the war dance, I asked the general, we Cloud Knights are supposed to charge into the fray and slay enemies. Why do we have to swing swords in a ring just to please an audience? And this is how the general replied. To unsheath your sword in a ring is no different than on the battlefield. As your sword reveals the might of all Cloud Knights, the war dance is the perfect chance to showcase martial virtue and forge alliances from all over the cosmos. When we unsheath the sword without drawing blood, we not only display our might, but also the martial virtue of the Cloud Knights. That's quite an insightful statement, Yan Ching. Well, my apologies for being so short-sighted. I've been on the Law Fu for quite some time, but I haven't had the chance to see the ceremony venue for myself yet. Hearing you speak so highly of it has piqued my curiosity. Would you mind showing me around? You want to see the Sky Splitter ship where the war dance will be held? Let's go! I bet Yun Li and Miss March haven't seen it either, right? Well then, I'll give you all a tour. Um, I guess we're going now with this fox dude. Oh, I'll talk to you first? Okay. I'll give you a tour of the Sky Splitter. Good idea. Head to Station Lali or however you say that. Okay, we are here.
Looks like a lot of other visitors have also come to catch a glimpse of the Sky Splitter. <sighs> what do you smell? Uh, what's up, Mr. Jaucho? No, it's nothing. Hmm, Do you see you that sure? airship in the distance? That's the Sky Splitter. The venue for the war dance ceremony. It doesn't look all that impressive from this distance. Maybe, maybe get inside. The Sky Splitter is actually a decommissioned Lawfu military vessel. Oh, look at those two! Until the war dance officially commences. They're like on a date. Well, a young date, I was saying. Tomorrow, when the bell rings and the ceremonial cannons roar, I'll be there representing the Cloud Knights of the Sianjo La Fu. Standing in the ring, ready to take on challengers from all over the cosmos. Since I was a kid, I've been training in swordplay and the art of war under the general. Every day, I'd swing my sword 10,000 times, and then thrust it 10,000 times. Repeating the process over and over. I understand that I'm not like other kids. I never envied the toys and freedom they all had. I never found sword practice boring or hard, even in the thick of battle. Facing down savage abominations, I never felt scared. Each day, I could feel myself getting stronger and stronger, and I racked up countless victories. It's the best feeling in the world, but then I faced a really tough opponent and just one slash shattered my confidence into a thousand pieces. That's when I felt true fear for the first time. Maybe that's what Mr. Zhao Cho meant by life and death hinge on a singular moment. Every idea fades into nothingness after that. I had to pick up the pieces and try to put myself back together. But no matter how hard I tried, I couldn't seem to find my old happy self again. I often ask myself, why do I wield my sword? If defeat is inevitable, why do I continue to fight? Is it to reclaim the joy of victory? To meet the general's expectations? Or to secure my honor among the Cloud Knights. While the General could teach me the art of swordplay, he couldn't teach me why I should keep on going. He said the reason must come from within myself. I've been struggling to find that reason, but after talking with you, Mr. Zhao Cho, I think I already have that reason in mind. As a member of the Cloud Knights, and the General's Apprentice. I've had a weight on my shoulders. And I know there's still more to shoulder, but when I wield my sword, it feels like I'm letting go of everything. I love the feeling of giving it my all, facing any obstacle in front of me, pressing forward. That's why I wield my sword. Okay, buddy. Oh, Yenqing. So young, yet so grown up. By the way, how old are you exactly? <gasps> Get to the phone? Are you 14 or something? Age doesn't really matter. All sword masters will understand how I feel. Oh man, I was gonna hope they would say because people are guessing like so many times. Hmm. I get it. Looks like all the kids on the law who live tough lives. So, how about you, Miss Yunli? Uh, I don't know about that. It's not polite to ask a girl her age, no matter which Sienjo ship you're on. Exactly, tell them! I'm not asking your age. I'm asking if you have a dream like Yan Ching has. Seriously? You don't talk like a cook. You sound more like a TV host or something. Now on! <laughs> <laughs> Need I repeat myself again? I'm a healer. Well, I... I don't have a dream like Yan Ching does. The only reason I'm participating in the Ringmaster's Challenge is because I made a promise to my grandfather that I'd win the 
precious sword he's contributed to the war dance. Sounds like that mind of yours is just filled with swords. <laughs> I bet you've got nothing better on your mind. My father was a craftsman on the Sienjo Juming. Because of his foolishness, many innocent people fell victim to the cursed swords he forged. Since I was a kid, it's been clear to me that not everyone deserves to have a weapon in their hands. Giving them a sword is no different than being cruel to the innocent. So, whenever I come across someone unworthy of a sword, I can't help but want to take it away from them. Given that Yen Qing is the war dance ringmaster, I'm stepping up to challenge him to ensure the precious sword doesn't fall into the hands of an unworthy master. Hey, what do you mean by an unworthy master? <sighs> I see. It's not easy for kids on the Ju Ming either. Well, it's better to have a reason for wielding a sword than to be lost and confused. I've saved countless Cloud Knights in my life. There are plenty of exceptional warriors, just like the two of you. What happened, Mr. Zhao Cho? Uh, oh, oh, nothing. I was just reminded of some old friends and old tales. Judging from my professional perspective as a healer, both of you possess remarkable vitality. Your energies flow like raging fires and mighty gales. The upcoming fight definitely be impressive. Well, we've seen the Sky Splitter and toured the Stargazer Navalia. I guess it's time to say goodbye for now. What? You're leaving already? But you haven't asked me about my dreams. I've been working hard too, you know. I don't think so. It's getting late, Miss March. Unlike you lot, I'm a grown-up bound by responsibilities and duties. The tasks entrusted to me by the General won't complete themselves. By the way, Yen Qing, is it normal to have so many people wandering around in an automated area like the Stargazer Navalia? Actually, this is a restricted area. But since you're all guests, I made an exception, so you can take a look around. I understand. Well, I'll take my leave. I wish you both the best of luck in the ring tomorrow. Oh, look at WWE. We jack all ways and did leaves. Okay. Bye, Fox, Foxy and Boy. Uh, seriously? I just spent so much time thinking about my dream, but he didn't even ask me. Now that we're done with our tour of the Sky Splitter, shall we continue with our training? Why don't we take a day off? What? You want to secretly practice swordplay by yourself? Dream on. <laughs> You know, cramming before a fight never works out. For some reason, seeing the Sky Splitter has boosted my confidence. So, I've decided to conserve my strength for tomorrow. All right, I'll take you out of the Stargazer Navalia. All right, so let's go move out of here. Hold up, is going on out here? Oh, just shut up, Red Fang. This is not a beast ship. I need some time to take care of things. You willingly donned the skin of a lowly beast to join this mission, dedicating yourself to our glorious cause. And now you're telling me you can't handle it? Do you realize how many ships we need? I'm doing my best, all right? It takes time to figure all this out. When the guns go off tomorrow, all eyes will be on it. That'll be our only chance. Oh, they're plotting something. How's that? Who's there? Who are you guys? An impromptu inspection. Why are there outsiders loitering in Stargazer Navalia? And a bunch of kids at that? Nah, 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 no, no. You're lying. Kids, didn't your parents ever tell you to stay away from the Stargazer Navalia? I know it's an automated facility, but it doesn't mean you can just break in and do what you want. Hmm. Who are you calling kids? First of all, I'm an adult. Second, I didn't just break in. <laughs> I'm in my 20s! 
Who looks like a minor bug now? Yeah, we blew here on a star skiff. Like, whoosh. Pff, whoosh. <laughs> well, I'm not trying to tell you off. But this place is off limits to the public, you know? Uh, big sis, let's go. I, I want to play in Ever Hunt Plains. <gasps> what? Um, play, come on, dude, uh, ma'am. Huh? Ever Hunt Plains? Sure, Big Sis will take you there. Sure, come on, play along. This may be confusing. Shuha. You should have let me. Shh, the overhaul is done, and everything looks good. We should leave. Nah, we know something's up. We got to act like it. Could you repeat what you just said, Yenching? What did I say? Big sis, let's go. I want to play in everyone planes. Uh, come on, can't you read the room? Something is definitely off about the three people we just met. Yeah, anyone could see that. <laughs> I just wanted to hear you say it again. Oh, he lo she likes that. That pink-haired box tried to say something. I'm pretty sure he sent something fishy. Since he's not familiar with this place, he just dropped us a hint. But you didn't seem to be paying attention at all. I knew that from the beginning. Hmm. Uh, looks like they were tampering with the scholarship production lines, huh? They said they were doing an overhaul, but it looked like they had no idea how to operate the Starskiff production line, right? And it's suspicious how they suddenly finished their overhaul and walked away as soon as they laid eyes on us. A clout knight, a member from the Skyfaring Commission, and a craftsman. They're from various departments, and the reason for the overhaul seems legit. But one of them blurted out some weird language just now. Did you hear that? I have a feeling that if we secretly tail them, we'll definitely catch these guys in the act. Follow my lead, and be careful not to blow our cover. Yeah, got it. God is a boy. We gotta be careful then. Ooh. -hoo. Never mind who they are. Let's just film them. Take a picture of the sussy, I mean, suspicious plotting at the scene. During the mission, while well, Cushion needs to be met to continue the pure fellowship, the call out Cushion to list the top of the call with the fellowship to interference. While well, all the other crimes are met, you can press the shot to complete the shot. Try to beat all the crimes if you can. It's just these three. Take off oh, times four. Yeah, look at those boy. Yeah, selfie! We should have just killed those lowly beasts. Those little brats won't take up much space. There are boxes all over this place. Just dump them into one and no one will notice. Cut the theatrics, Grulok. Even the slightest slip-up could interfere with Lord Moktok's plans. So where are we heading next? To check the freight skiffs. We've got a lot of preparations to do. Also, don't forget to take those crates with you. Weapons, supplies. We've got to be well prepared. Otherwise, we're screwed. Yeah, you're gonna be screwed already. So, are they smugglers? What exactly are they up to? I have no clue. But they seem to be moving those crates. I've got an idea. We can hide inside the crates and follow them. Can I fit inside? Or do you mean. Wait, those crates? Really? Like, oh, never mind. Take advantage of the temporary advance of the group. The cost you're supposed to create and call inside. Uh, so cramped in here. I can hardly breathe. Just hang in there. You hear voices pressing back and forth beside the crates. If someone would open the crate at the moment, they would suddenly catch you and be the tiny person. Fortunately, that doesn't happen. The floor machine that bound the crate is activated. You feel that it begins to drift slowly forward. After the feels entire entire air of holding. But in silence, you hear a sound of quick touching down. Let's just put the cargo here for now, all right? Then we'll move on to inspect the ships. Lord Moktok said that as soon as we're done, we're to board the freight skiff and leave this place. Don't worry, I've changed the shipping schedule. You two, come with me. Is it just me? I keep smelling that stench of lowly beasts everywhere we go. Don't be so paranoid. The departing force bit sounds like a signal. The point of the in sign of relief. Looks like they're planning to escape on the skiffs in Stargazer Navalia. They keep talking about their plans, but where do they come from? And what do they want to do on the Sienjo? Uh, they're definitely up to something bad. Wait, uh, they disappeared! 
Let's catch up to them. Uh oh. <gasps> oh shit! We gotta sneak on them. Careful, boys. Tread softly. Breathe quietly. And make sure to keep an eye on them. Hide out of sight as soon as there's any sign of activity. Fishy surroundings. Shit. What upstairs? Watch out! They're on high alert. That's sh quiet, quiet boy. Let them walk. I'm just gonna walk very quietly. He also clicking my. Sh Make them less clicky noises, and you'll be fine. Okay, you'll be good. Oh, that's it. Don't be so paranoid. We're running out of time. Get over here, Shuhard. I'm coming. Shuhard? The language is the same, though. They're leaving. We should catch up to them. Quick! Did he spot us? Quickly, hide. Shh. Quiet. Shut the fuck up. We'll be okay. Ooh. Oh. Okay. This side right here. Oh. Oh. Oh, uh, this way. Okay, we're good. What are they up to? They're all wearing official uniforms, but I'm pretty sure they're not members of the Skyfaring Commission, the Artisanship Commission, or the Cloud Knights. This is way too suspicious. Uh, never mind who they are. Let's just film them. That way, if they do anything bad, we'll have solid evidence against them. That's true. Boy took a picture of them. Uh, times three. Suspicious Foxian. Hmm. The movement of the phone is switched out. Oh, he's beating. Look at this. A freight star skiff with enough room to fit at least 20 of my men. I'll let the others know and have them prepare more star skiffs. Once we're past the checkpoint, there will be beast ships waiting for us. Lord Moktok is ready. The revival of our ancient bloodline all hinges on this operation. What the fuck are you thinking? What did he just say? Beast ships? <laughs> Who's there? How? What the hell do we? How do you hear this? It's those brats! I told you to get rid of them, but you didn't listen, you idiot! What's next? Let them all out! Oh, ho, ho. no one wanna make his own languages. Nah, they're done. Just wait. Adosa! Die, you lowly beast! Eeny, meeny, money, mo, da, 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 da. Lastly, I'm just gonna. S I'm gonna give it to. I choose next level. <gasps> no, I'll give it to Kafka. Just to be safe. Hey, you master, Kafka. Oh, no, the child's been abusive! We got a healer and a senior and Kafka on our team. That'll be okay. Whoop. What? May song bring us victory. Sing. To make you shut Stand up. Still. Okay, who is who's get shocked? Uh probably you do. Hmm. Spock. Relax. This is part of a good team, but you know what? This is okay by me. I don't care, actually. Um, okay. How about I give it to Robin? Have some tea. You just call- Oh my god, that sounds so wrong to say to, to, say to Robin. I love you, Robin! Notice me! Oh my gosh, she needs to heal up though. I need to hurry up. Uh-oh, you know how you do? This right now, just to be safe. You're too good okay, today. We're good, we're good. Hey, watch out. Ooh. You know who's next? Okay. I'm gonna have to eat. The and then press some singing. We oh, gotta do some singing. The stars echo because of me. That breathing sensation. Remember it. This won't take long. Skills polished, ready to shine. 
Hmm, left away. I'm taking left. Stand still. Gonna bonk your head. I'm gonna shock Victory. you guys. Never last. Time to say bye. Hell no! You better not. Not mommy. What I can really do. This dude on you. Azure dragon, white tiger, eating less calm. Watch this! <laughs> it's very cute when she does that. Oh, oh, I shock you. Hey, oh, 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 shit. We just killed your friend. You next. Right in the penis. Damn, Linux, you just went through the penis. How is this possible? How did these Foxians change their appearances like that? They're not Foxians at all. They revealed their true form. They're Borison. Just like the bandits I defeated on the IPC ship. Oh shit, Wait, you're right. That means... The poison has infiltrated the Sienjo. Well, how did the Borison manage to infiltrate the Sienjo? It's not just a simple disguise of wearing our clothing and shaving their whiskers. They're somehow able to alter their appearance to be indistinguishable from Foxians. They even have official IDs for the Skyfaring Commission, the Artisanship Commission, and... and... even the Cloud Knights? Let me check this fake Cloud Knights tag. Maybe it'll give us some clues. Lu Jun, an officer of the Patrol Defense Squad? Huh? Wait! Oh, shit. What's the matter? I encountered a patrol officer named Lu Jun before. It was a few weeks ago when we were transporting the Borison prisoners. Oh, it makes sense now. If they can forge official identities and move around the Sienjo without raising suspicion. Oh no, this is bad. Uh, even worse, if you find one cockroach on the express, it usually means there are more Borison hiding on the Sienjo. I bet their plan is much bigger than just stealing information. Yeah. We've got to report this to the Seat of Divine Foresight. You're like, Dad, look what I find! Meanwhile, in the Seat of Divine Foresight, oh shit. Oh, be your bar. It's, the, it's that foxy lady over there again. Oh, look at those heels, damn! I am glad to finally meet you in person, guests from the Astral Express. I'm Fei Xiao, the general of this Yan Zhou Yao Cheng. Fei Xiao? Okay, interesting. Let me introduce our guest to you. The one dressed in green. He's the reincarnation of Inviter Lune, and the person behind him is the newest member of the crew. I've heard a lot about you. Yes. Outside the reports from the Law Fu, the Skyfaring Commission of the Yao Xing has also gathered plenty of information about both of you. I've been eager to meet you face to face for reasons that. I'm sure General Jing Yuan has explained, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, we're here to answer your questions as witnesses. <laughs> That's right. But don't worry, this isn't a trial. I just want to have a chat with you and get a better understanding of the facts. According to General Jing Yuan's report, the Ruin Legion is to blame for the Ambrosial Arbor Crisis, and all Arbiter Generals should pay attention to the Ruin Author's movements. Over the years, the Destruction's minions have wreaked havoc on countless worlds, and the Alliance has been keeping an eye on them. But no one expected them to join hands with the remnants of the Abundance. The damage caused by the Ambrosial Arbor Crisis was far less severe than expected, which is good news for us. However, it was quite different from the Ruin Legion's usual style of destroying life wherever they go. While I trust the bravery of the Divine Foresight and the Nameless, I'm curious about some details missing from the report. I'd like to take this chance to have an exchange with both of you. 
Okay. Let me be clear. The questions I'll ask might not reflect my actual thoughts. So please don't take offense if any of my questions seem a bit harsh. Please go ahead, General. But keep in mind we can only answer based on what we know. And perhaps you already have the answers to your questions in your heart. <laughs> you have a clever tongue. I like it. All right. The question starts. The Merlin's claw is quite articulate. Right now, her intentions are unknown, and Jin Yuan wants us to be honest. Maybe I'll just stick to the facts we know. Let's Go for that. The chase. Before the crisis struck, the Astral Express was guided here by a Stellaron hunter, a wanted felon, in an attempt to resolve the Stellaron crisis. However, everyone in the cosmos knows of the Stellaron hunter's reputation. So, why did you place so much trust in them? Could it be that some of you have a connection with them? Hmm. Uh. What? Talk about prophecy. It all comes down to the Stellaron. We are the good guys. What is your decision about your relationship with Stellaron hunters? I'm. Hmm. I don't know what to say honestly. I'm gonna say the top. The top one though. Let's start with that. Apart from the Lafu, there are many other worlds suffering from Stellaron corrosion. For example, Yorillo 6, the world that the Express stopped at before reaching the Lafu, was one of them. To the Express, Stellarons act as roadblocks on the Silver Rail and pose risks to the warping process. And that's why dealing with Stellaron issues is part of the duty of the Nameless. Ah, I've heard about those problems caused by Stellarons. The Express connects various worlds, so it makes sense for you to take care of this. The cosmos is a mess, and the trailblazers are just doing their best to fix it. Hmm. I understand. Let's move on to the next question. The report suggests that Don Shu, the master of the Disciples of Sanctus Medicus, colluded with the Lord Ravager and used the power of the Stellaron to resurrect the Ambrosial Arbor. But here's the thing. Don Shu was just a chief alchemist. Even if she colluded with our enemies and summoned the Stellaron, how did she manage to bypass the Vidyatara guards around the Ambrosial Arbor? Hmm. Let's see. Uh, the uh, definition of the Lafu seems sus. The extra level was what led to this calamity. Refuse? Why would you suppose anything? I actually personally met that person. I personally met Don Shu once. Her closest friend was killed during the war on the Fangho, and she harbored deep hatred towards the hunt. So she spent years making preparations in the Alchemy Commission in order to take revenge on the Sienjo. Revenge is also a form of the hunt. However, that doesn't explain how she managed to bring the Stellaron into the Scale Gorge waterscape, which was guarded by the Vidyatara. Well, you should ask Don Shu herself for the answer. Unfortunately, Don Shu is dead, and even her corpse has crumbled into ash. That's one less clue we can pursue. According to the report, Lord Ravager Fantilia is the mastermind behind the entire conspiracy. She disguised herself as an amicassador of the Sky Faring Commission and traveled with you, only to vanish without a trace later on. It seems too convenient to label her as a scapegoat. Hmm. Fantilia is a Heliobus? Yeah, yeah, she is. Fantilia is one of the Heliobi. The energy life forms that once fought against the Sienjo. They're known for their unpredictable and elusive nature. Just as he said, when the Ambrosial Arbor resurrected, its roots broke through the creation furnace on the Lawfu, accidentally releasing the Heliobus fiend fire sealed inside. This can be used as circumstantial evidence. If Elder Huai Yen accepts the explanation, so do I. Hey, we won. We got it. Won the oh. battle. It seems that your answers have addressed all my questions. Mm -hmm. Generals, I am finished with my questioning. So, what do you think, General Fei Shao? Have the doubts in the report been cleared up? <sighs> the two nameless have been honest in their answers. Even though there are some tricky details, my intuition tells me there is nothing wrong. However, the three questions I posed earlier were not just for the nameless. But for you too, General Jing Yuan. First, the disciples of Sanctus Medicus grew uninterrupted on the Law Fu, yet the six charioteers were not aware of it. 
That was a dereliction of duty. Second, you believed in the Stellaron Hunter's prophecy and entrusted outsiders to solve the crisis, even granting them access to the Plague Mark. That was a dereliction of responsibility. Third, you insist on holding the war dance right after the Ambrosial Arbor Crisis, putting the Lawfu back in the spotlight. That is a dereliction of wisdom. Merlin's Claw. Is this your line of thinking, or the Ten Lords? From the moment I walked in, I made it clear that the questions I'd ask might not reflect my actual thoughts. <sighs> the disciples of Sanctus Medicus were deeply rooted and had been plotting for a long time. I admit it was my negligence for not noticing it earlier. As for the Stellaron Hunter's prophecy, I didn't believe all of it. But in the end, the Law Food did survive the Ambrosial Arbor Crisis. So, I think it's safe to say that Elio's prophecy about the future holds some merit. And as for the war dance, do you think I'm unaware of the risks? However, risks can also be opportunities. The Law Fu has lain low for too long. I believe it's time to stir up the dregs hidden in the depths and wash them away once and for all. <laughs> Just as I expected from our sophisticated divine foresight. You have a way with words. I like it. But, unfortunately, ever since the report was submitted, the Alliance has been filled with rumors and speculation. Even within the Law Fu, there are people accusing you of neglecting your duties, resulting in the Ambrosial Arbor's resurrection. So what are your thoughts on all of this, General Fei Shao? As a fellow Arbiter General, I fully understand the difficulties of this position. Personally, I think all these rumors are meaningless drivel. Yeah, Across exactly. Across the sea of stars, the divine foresight knows better than anyone else what happened on the Law Fu and the meaning behind it. Just as what happened on the Xianzhou Yao Qing recently. You mean the Xianzhou Yao Qing is also. And the scouts of the Verdant Knights have sent back reports that Borison are making trouble again. The Borison packs that were once divided and scattered have started swallowing each other up, forming larger and larger packs. Moreover, there's an entity named Mongus behind it all. An entity? According to the report, this entity isn't actually a Borson. It's a woman claiming to be the messenger of the Master of Immortality. She's described as having 12 faces and 12 pairs of fangs, as cruel as poison and as elusive as quicksand. The Borson believe she'll give them a chance to rise again. <sighs> That's Fentilia. That's right. You're lucky that I'm the one who came this time. If it were the Patina Justice or the Seer Strategist, this conversation might not be so friendly. I've always had faith in my instincts, so I don't doubt your good intentions. But the Alliance has its fair share of questions and doubts about the Law Fu. So, my plan is to come up with an acceptable answer to satisfy the Alliance. What's in this plan? General Fei Xiao. General Jing Yuan, you already know what has to be done. But since you don't want to be the bad guy, I'll take care of it for you. You need the final word from the Ten Lords Commission to quell any doubts. And for that, I'll have to ask the two Nameless to visit the Shackling Prison. What? Are you in prison? No, I don't think so. No, I'm not imprisoning you. While you're there, okay, good. I'll ask a judge in the Ten Lords yeah, Commission's no Interrogation way. Division to record a detailed testimony with the karmic mirror from both of you. We'll fill in the gaps that weren't covered in the report and silence any protests within the Alliance. I'm okay with that. Okay. I object! Oh, that's a joke, by the way. More than I might go back in my word and keep you in the shackling prison? Relax. If I wanted to do that, you'd already be behind bars. Once you're done with your testimony, you're free to come and go as you please. That was a joke, by the way. Then, as the Merlin's Claw requests... Oh, there's one more thing. This testimony is for silencing the voices of opposition within the Alliance. But I would like to urge General Jing Yuan to listen to the pleas of the Foxians on the Xianzhou Yao Qing. So, 
You are here for Hule. Exactly. Hule is locked up in the Lawfu's shackling prison. Since he is the broodlord of the Borisin, I want to transfer him onto the Xianzhou Yaoqing and imprison him there. The recent movements of the Borisin suggest they're planning something big, so we must act preemptively. It makes sense to have the Foxians keep an eye on their arch nemesis. Since you trust my judgment, I'll repay that trust. What do you think about all this, General Huayan? <laughs> I was worried this would turn into a heated argument, but it seems like both of you are on the same page, solving each other's problems. I couldn't have asked for a better outcome. And as for Hule, I'll send my lieutenant Zhao Chao and Moza to check on his condition in prison and ready him for transport. If there are no more questions, shall we get this started? Mm-hmm. I mean, no, yeah, I'm gonna stop it there. Oh, well, I'm gonna there. Like, subscribe, I'll see you later. Sayonara. Mm -hmm.